So today in this lecture we people will derive joule's law of heating So for deriving joule's law of heating first of all we must know about universal law of energy that is energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another So in joule's law of heating as the name suggests the electrical energy that get converted to heat energy and light energy now let us see how this is happening for this we must consider a circuit having a battery key resistance a voltmeter and ammeter so let us consider the current i is flowing through resistance r for the time t and the potential difference across the resistance is v so also if the current is flowing that means charge is also flowing through it let q is the charge that is flowing through the circuit for the time t then the work done w in moving the charge q will be w is equal to potential difference into charge how this equation is there because we know that potential difference is work done per unit charge so after cross multiplying we will get w is equal to potential difference into charge let this be equation number 1 now as we know power power is rate of doing work so power will be work done per unit time that it be equation number 2 now put this w equal to vq into this equation that is equation number 2 you will get p that is power is equal to vq by t now we know that q by t that is charge per unit time or rate of flow of charge this is known as current so p is equal to vi this is equation number 3 now energy supplied to the circuit by the source in time t is given by e is equal to power into time now how this equation is there because we know that power is equal to work done by time now work done is stored in the form of energy so energy will be equal to power into time so energy is power into time and this energy is stored in the form of heat energy into the circuit so therefore let it be as h h is heat energy so heat energy is power into time and let this equation be equation number 4 now put equation number 3 in equation number 4 we people will get h is equal to vit that is potential difference current into time this is equation number 5 now according to ohm's law we know that v is equal to ir that is potential difference is equal to current into resistance this is equation number 6 now put this equation that is equation number 6 into equation number 5 we people will get h is equal to ir into it i into i that is i square so h is equal to i square rt this is known as joule's law of heating so according to joule's law of heating as a relation is there heat dissipated this is directly proportional to the square of the current heat dissipated is directly proportional to the resistance and heat dissipated is directly proportional to the time so that means if current is more heat will be more resistance is more heat will be more time is more heat will be more now this was the derivation after this applications are there it is used in heating appliances like geyser is there heaters are there electrical toaster is there electrical oven is there and so many other heating appliances the second most important application of joule's law of heating is electrical bulb in electrical bulb we people know that a filament is there that is made up of tungsten metal why it is used because its melting point is very very high that is 3380 degree celsius so it converts electrical energy to heat and light energy now next application is electrical fuse this is also known as known as a safety device why because it protects the circuits and appliances by stopping the flow of any high electrical current it is always placed in series with the device so if a current larger than the specified value flows through the circuit then the temperature will increase and the fuse will melt and automatically what will happen the circuit will break so the current will not flow so these are the applications and the derivation of joule's law of heating thank you